Quick Station 1 wanted to know the process of going from SketchUp to G-Code. Uh, he designed a small handheld mirror in SketchUp uh, and wanted to cut it out. So he sent me the file. Here's the file. It looks like a pretty simple um, project uh, where it's just going to have one small pocket and a profile cut. Generally not fond of using SketchUp uh, for uh, CAM work, but since this file is rather simple, uh, it's going to work just fine. The first thing you need to do is get a plugin called Export to DXF or STL. You need this because the free version of SketchUp has very limited output options. Um, if you get the pro version, you'll be able to do some more exporting, but with the basic version, um, uh, you're out of luck. Uh, fortunately, uh, SketchUp has a very robust uh, scripting environment, and people have written some good scripts, uh, and this one was written, and you can get it on GitHub. So the first thing you need to do is select the in item you want to export, and you click export to DXF or STL. You need to select the units. This was drawn in inches, so that's what I'm going to export it as. I'm going to export the DXF in polylines, because that's going to work best for me uh, with this project. I say OK, and then I give it a name. I'll stick with the mirror. Gives me a little report of what it exported. So now I have the file in DXF, uh, but uh, I probably need to edit a little before I go into my uh, CAM program. So I'm going to use a program called DraftSite. DraftSite is an AutoCAD clone from Desalt Systems. Uh, very strong program. I recommend it uh, for uh, DXF editing. So I'm going to open up that file. Make sure I have DXF selected here. And here it is. Now, uh, looking right on top, it looks great. But if I open up an isometric view, I can see there's a whole bunch of faces and things like that. Uh, for what I'm doing, this is not going to be uh, useful. So I got to get rid of some stuff. I also have this little extra line here, so I'll select that and delete it. And then I want to get rid of all these faces and just keep the uh, uh, top polylines. The easiest way to do that is to look at it from a front view and then zoom out a little here. And then I'm just going to select inside this area, not getting the outside lines and that way I'm just selecting the faces. Now if I go back to that isometric view I'll see what I have. I've gotten rid of all the faces. Uh, now when I look on top I'm gonna see uh, uh, these double lines here so I can get rid of uh, one of them. So I'll get rid of the top one here and the top one here and then if I look at it from a top view that's perfect. I'm going to save it, keeping it in the DXF format. I like to keep it in an older version like R12 or R2000. The, the older versions are more compatible uh, upstream when you're going to the CAM, so we'll do that and right over the old file and close it. Now I have a good DXF to bring in to my CAM program. I'm going to use Aspire here. There's a lot of options here. You could use CAM BAM, other things like that. So I'm going to uh, uh, create a new file. I'll make sure that it's big enough to, f the raw material is big enough to fit what I'm bringing in. It's going to be three quarter inch thick. I want my origin over in the corner. So now I'm going to import the vectors. There it is. It's a little offset. So I'll drag it in. I'm 
put it there. So next step is creating the uh, pocket. I use the pocket tool for that. You always want to cut the inside features before the outside features, of course. So right now I'm going to select a nice big end mill, like a half inch. Uh, pass depth. I'm only going to do about a one eighth inch pass depth. So um, or uh, pass, so I just want to make sure my pass depth is larger than that so that I can cut it in one pass. Here I have it set for one eighth of an inch. Let's check some of my other things here. I'll go ahead and uh, name it, calculate it. So now I've created the um, pocket. Now I just need to run the profile around it. What I'll probably do, since this is three quarters of an inch thick, is cut it in about three passes. I don't want to see the pass lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to check my uh, pass step, make sure it's big enough. Uh, uh, actually, I want to change that to about three-tenths of an inch and then I'm gonna do about 0.7 so it leaves um, 0.05 inches and I'm gonna cut off the edge by using an allowance offset so that the first cut is slightly off the edge and when I do a final pass I'm gonna cut it in one pass right on the edge so I'll call this cut out one Calculate that. Close. I'm going to look at it in a 3D view. I can see it's going to do three passes there, which is which is good enough. Uh, and then I'm going to come back and do final pass 0.78 to overcut it. Make sure that I have I'll make it 0.8. And make sure this is now zero. It's going to give me a warning that it's going to cut all the way through the material, and I better have something underneath, or I'll damage my machine. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Now I can go into the. Um, previewer and I can uh, preview the paths. There's my pocket. There's my first pass. You can see this leaving a little room. Final one. And that's my little mirror. That's basically it.